Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Outdoor Education Ingredient. My name is Rosalia Wong. Guess what I'm going to bring to you today? Today the topic is collaborative inquiry and effective structure or form of learning. <laughs> started. For awesome suggestions and advices, put me through the link in the description section below as well. I will bring you awesome insights into what you need for your profession and your organization. Okay, let's get back to the topic today. So, um, collaborative inquiry as suggested by many adult educators as a very effective form of um, learning. Why? First of all, let us look at the um, advantages of collaborative inquiries. So I'm going to list into three uh, six, three um, of the advantages. So the first advantages I'm going to tell you is it is applied within a group of uh, adult learners uh, to demonstrate the diversity of the purpose, the context, and the organization and the roles played by the adult educators. The second advantage is um, the collaborative uh, inquiries. They possess useful inquiries of the participants, which may help to facilitate the group work and communication. The third advantage is with the guidance of an adult educators, uh, less educated um, learners can see the uh, purposes of the participation, for example, uh, in the workplace such as uh, school and offices, industries and organization. So you can subscribe uh, to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything as I will bring you all uh, new topics, new insights and new ingredients every Monday. So let's get back to the topic again. Now, I'm going to rule out the example of our collaborative inquiries. So according to the research by Yorks and Castles in uh, 2002, uh, collaborative uh, inquiries pursues an elusive yet powerful phenomena uh, or inner experiences of the purposes uh, ultimately enhancing the inquirer's practice and the presence in the world. So for example, uh, for a group of nurses in the hospital, so we can divide the group learning method into three phases. So the phase one is the uh, group learners to communicate with each other and they understand the needs and wants. The phase two is they focus on the uh, self and growing on the understanding of the of the individual, eventually developing the skills in how the nurses could communicate with each other. The phase three is to use the new skills and capacities um, to build communities throughout the hospital. So inquiry helps um, learners to take uh, Experiences or practical uh, knowledge that is tailored and uh, tested by the uh, process of uh, the group reflection process. Sorry, and uh, this th this is a quote uh, by Smith, two thousand two, and cited by uh, Yorks and Castle. Okay, now we come to the forms of collaborative inquiries. Very interesting. So I suggest you can go over the video again. It's quite a hard topic, but yet it's very interesting. I can guarantee you. So there are forms of collaborative inquiries. For example, intuition, the spiritual, and the operation and healing, and the weaving, how to weave into the stories of the participants. So I'm going to go into briefly go into each one of them. So for intuition, so what are the characteristics of, a characteris uh, of collaborative inquiries in the form of intuition? So, for example, the um, striving for the individual to um, have the equilibrium between uh, himself and the group, and also, for example, the characteristics such as to enhance access to non-linguistic knowing, for example, characteristics such as, such as the empowering process, and also characteristics such, such as energizing. Okay, now we come to the second one, spiritual. So what is spirituality to do with the collaborative inquiries? So the characteristic of collaborative inquiries in the form of spiritual, for example, they can experience the spirit as a co inquirer and also they can bring the spirit um, uh, inspired, um, inspired determination uh, or hope. 
through the process. For example, in the prayer community, um, they rely on the spiritual guidance and the spiritual inquiry and all that. Okay? Number three, operation and healing. So everything we learn um, is vital as process and comes from the heart, which brings healing. So the healing uh, enables the participants to feel different within oneself and uh, they would behave differently uh, to in the world. For example, uh, Rosen Weiser 2002 cited by a Yosin Castle study a group of Jewish women. These Jewish women experienced the healing after they communicating and reflecting uh, using the storytelling, songs, uh, artwork, movement and theatre in the group setting. So if you think the contents is good, you like the contents, remember to put your thumbs up and share it with your friend. Let's get back to the topic now. Now we come to number four. What, uh, what do you mean by weaving the stories um, into the stories of the participants in the form of uh, collaborative inquiries? Here, you make uh, making conversation and hearing other stories uh, collectively increase the power within oneself, and also creating and share the meaning. Uh, stories enable the inquirers to feel that they are not alone uh, on the path of action. So, for example, it is a very useful quote by uh, by Pratchett and Sandals 2002 cited by the uh, York and uh, Castle that if I look in front of me, uh, there's always someone giving me a hand. If I look behind me, I can always see someone needing me, needing my hand. Okay, this is a very good um, quote. I say that again. If I look in front of me, I always can feel that I can see someone uh, giving me a hand. If I look behind me, I always can see that someone needing my hand. Very good. As we know that um, we have, we know the forms of collaborative inquiries. Now we should know how the collaborative inquiries work. The uh, Yorks and Castle divide the. Um, uh, the uh, collaborative works working in uh, a few steps. So I'm going to go through the steps. So first step is the, is the researchers. They uh, identify the mutual in, mutual interest and then formulate in the uh, plan for research and then they begin to collect the data. The second step is the researchers are required to collect the data of their own experience and then they should have the agreement upon the actions that each member can take to create personal experience that related to the group inquiries question. And the third step is when the group adjoins, the inquirers uh, shift their role from the researchers being a researcher to being a subject. And the fourth um, step is by carrying out the action, um, by carrying out the action to which all have agreed and members generate personal experiences that will become the research group's um, important data, okay? Become the data. So, five steps. Number five, the step is when the group uh, convenes to make meaning of members' um, collective experiences, they must first learn what are the experiences for some of the form of collaborative uh, inquiries that I just mentioned before. And number six, however, the quality of one person's life experience is not easily communicated to another person. Number, uh, number seven is, thus the challenge before the group is, how do we communicate with each other uh, and talk about our experience as a subject and so that we can make um, sense of it as a researcher. Number eight, you can apply the uh, methods, the steps into your uh, your apply to your situation right now, and uh, you know it work through it. Um, it is a very effective way of corrupt, uh, of you know education. As I say, adult education. This is um, a very effective way of um, uh, giving uh, learning, and uh, as adult edu uh, learners. So I'm just giving you the hint. Okay, collaborative inquiry. The abbreviation is. CI. So that's all for my topic today. And um, for awesome suggestion, as I say, um, for advices and uh, um, suggestion, put me through the links from the description session below, as I will give you awesome insights into what you need to know for your professions and your organizations.
Now, in conclusion today, what we have learned. So we learned number one, collaborative inquiries is powerfully enables participants to take action, uh, reflect upon it all together and make the shape meaning. Number two, collaborative learning is a methodology which uh, uses the inquirers as a natural process that um, makes learner questions what he did. And also we learn number three that after the collaborative inquiries we can use reflection and discussion to take productive action in the communities and in the world uh, finally we learned that in collaborative uh, education um, uh, inquiries uh, we need to know the forms of collaborative inquiries and then after we know the forms of collaborative inquiries we should know how the collaborative inquiries work so you can subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything as I bring you new topics, new insights and new ingredients every Monday. Thank you for tuning in today. Until next week.